I don't know if it's because it's Easter and if I was home I'd probably be entering supermarkets and being sort of like overwhelmed by the amount of piles of this Italian sort of like pigeon shaped um, pastry that's called Colomba and I can't really find it as much here in like England if not in specific delis. A couple of weeks ago I brought back to someone a package of Pandistelle which is an Italian typical brand of cookies that I had not had in years and it's really difficult to find and it used to be my favourite brand of cookies when I was little. They used to be my favourite breakfast in the morning. I would normally dip them in milk or like let them get soggy in the milk so that it became a sort of like porridge like gooey consistency thingy that I could spoon out of the bowl. It was like a bowl of really gooey chocolatey goodness. It doesn't sound appealing but I can guarantee it was tasty. I haven't had them in ages but the other day I was at this person's house and everyone who had them told me that they tasted like bourbons which I have never had as well but that's just to do the comparison. Basically they taste like bourbon biscuits but better. And after that I just thought that there are so many different foodie related things that I miss about Italy and I thought I would just share it with you in a video because why not just because I want to be a bit nostalgic and think of food and get hungry because it's almost lunchtime. In terms of sweet things I think pandistellas are definitely a must. Pandistelle basically means bread made of stars which for someone like me who's basically obsessed with stars it's amazing as well so I really like them but one of my favorite cookies and if you've been following me for a while, you know that I always bring in my meetups, are uh, gochule. Gochule is basically sort of like a very sort of like dense and intense uh, chocolate chip cookie. It's dark chocolate chips in this sort of like really dense sugary uh, puff pastry. It tastes incredible and it's like drop shaped and there is a massive, massive, massive debate about how you should dip them because there are people that say that they should be dipped this way and people that say they should be dipped that way. Well, let's not lie, we all know the correct way of dipping them is this one. But how about how difficult it is, for example, to find fette biscottate here in England, where to spread like jam and Nutella and just like have breakfast with or just have a snack. They're basically, I know that they look like toast, but they're not toast, because they're like way crunchier than toast. It's almost like biscuits consistence, like a biscotto consistence, because they feel like they're being biscotted. That's what biscotted? I don't think that's a word. Like if you hold it too hard and you, you, you move it around, it breaks. I think you can say it's similar to breadsticks in terms of consistency, but it is kind of like malty and more sweet. You normally would, you wouldn't normally get savory fette biscottate. You would normally get like jam and Nutella on it. And I used to have breakfast with them, and like with honey as well, and like dip them in milk and very briefly before they kind of like just break in the middle, and then you find yourself having to like scout the lost one in the middle of your bowl of milk. I would also talk about quinotto. Quinotto is a San Pellegrino beverage that here in England we've got like uh, the lemonade, the orange juice, the red orange juice, whatever, but we very rarely find quinotto. Quinotto is basically a mixture of coke, fanta and gingerino, which is a very bitter sort of like fizzy beverage. I know it doesn't sound tasty, but it is really good. It's like a bitter coke that tastes slightly fruity. I don't even remember if I like it anymore, but I remember drinking it. Or for example the filled gnocchi with like tomato and mozzarella. It's like this really weird ball of pasta and inside it when you cook it they're ready, they're ready made. But inside when you cook them they've got, I think they're Giovanni Rana, tomato and mozzarella and it melts and when you cut them in a half it's like this pew, super super fuming and warming and hot like mixed of amazing food and I can't find them here in England. Oh god, that reminds me of my grandma. I used to actually make them myself when I got back from school around, around like two o'clock because they were ready made and I just had to like put them in a pan and just like wait for them to be cooked. Also here in England, we do not get carnival. So if I was in Italy, I would probably find everywhere frittelle, which are basically like a pastry that's made with like raisins and sometimes it's filled with custard cream and it's so nice and it's fried and or I would get crostoli which is basically a really 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 thin and crunchy pastry that's covered in powdered sugar or the castagnole that are really small and very dense and heavy sort of like sweet balls of stuff. My parents were like sending me photos of them eating all of this sort of stuff in my town and I haven't had them in years because I haven't, obviously like they're not vegan anymore, but still like I 
can't have them here because nobody makes them, obviously. Going back to sweets, I used to be obsessed with Kinder Feta Latte and Kinder Paradise. Um, Kinder Feta Latte is basically like this weird sort of like almost like an ice cream biscuit thing that has got like condensed milk in the middle and these two chocolatey soft uh, things that keep the filling together. Well, Kinder Paradiso was the one that everyone was eating at school. It was probably my favorite. And it just tastes like a, a I guess, a really soft, vanilla sweet, sweet, sweet cake with a lot of like powdered sugar that if you eat, you normally like get your mouth covered in powdered sugar, like all white and your nose as well. And I just remember it was horrible to like take off. I don't think it's easy to find Kinder and Ferrero stuff here. My dad instead used to be obsessed with Camille. Camille were these sort of like really weird sort of like cupcake -y thingy that tasted like carrots. And nobody when they were young liked it. Very few people. Because it tastes like carrots. Nobody likes carrots when you're like six. And raise your hands, who wants a crostatina right now? Which is basically a tiny version of a jam crusty pie that like contained a jam and that sort of stuff. Like that, like a pie, like a fruit pie, but smaller. And I used to have the one with the apricot uh, jam and the chocolate one. And they were another one of those things that you kept uh, bringing in school for the uh, break between lectures. And Oh my god, I used to love them so much and I used to like get like this Molino Bianco stuff all the time. Molino Bianco is one of my favorite brands from when I was home, like I used to get so many things from that brand. Also, let's talk about Cordimela. I used to eat these biscuits and my grandma all the time. They're basically really soft and nice uh, cookies filled with apple jam and apple pieces and cinnamon, which is one of my favorite things. I, I used to eat so many when I was watching like Dragon Ball Z or Naruto or like Lamu or anything that they would do at like 1 p.m. after coming back from school and my grandma would just feed me cookies. And Lastine, it's kind of like really, really soft and sugary puff pastry that has been like baked in the oven and it's shaped as a bow tie and it's really nice and really, oh my god, when it's warm, it's the best thing in the world. I'm not sure I've seen them here, but when I was little, I used to have galatine a lot, which is basically a sweet made of condensed milk, which I probably couldn't be having now. But I don't think I've seen them here in England. And do you know those kind of sweets that were like shaped as uh, citrus slices, so like lemon and orange and stuff like that, and you would just like unwrap them and they were like shaped like that and you just like suck them in your mouth until they got really really small and then you basically chewed on them? Oh my god, that brings me so back. And I, and I think the last uh, thing I'm gonna mention is fregolotta. Fregolotta is basically a really, really like hard cake. It's like almost it's almost like a cookie, it's like a huge cookie thing uh, and it's very crunchy and to eat it normally you would like punch it in the middle and it would just like crack in different pieces and you would just eat the pieces that cracked and some people like put it with Nutella, some people just ate it like that and it was just, it's very dense, it's very sort of like heavy but it, I used to love having it, I used to have it in the caravan when we used to go to the mountain uh, with my family and I can't, I actually just remember about Orochok which were basically like a normal tea biscuit with a bit of like proper actually like piece of chocolate on top glued together so it's like a biscuit and chocolate and it just fits and oh my god they taste it so great but yeah i think these were my favorite brands of things that i'm missing from italy when i'm here and i just thought i'd share with you because i think it's interesting to know different kind of food and different things that we have in different countries and have you ever tried them do you miss them what are your favorites what are the things that you actually really like here in england what are the things that you actually really like in your country i'd be very interested to know that and hopefully i made you hungry because i'm actually really hungry now oh my god it's almost lunchtime i can't believe it i really 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 can't wait to eat I woke up too early this morning, oh my god, I got a lot of peanuts and raisins. Oh god, I love raisins. I used to hate raisins. But yeah, I'm gonna go now, and I will see you in my next video. Booyah.